did you originally get started diving? What made you fall in love with the sport? Yeah, uh, so my mom was a college coach. Uh, she coached at Amherst College, University of Massachusetts, a uh, phenomenal coach. And uh, I just grew up hanging around the pool. So, you know, <laughs> from the time I was born, I was on the pool deck. And uh, as I got older, learned how to swim, I'd start jumping in the water and started getting on the boards. And there was never any pressure to start diving, which was something that I was at her practices and it looked pretty fun. So I thought I might as well try it and just turned out to be something I love doing and uh, really just, you know, gained a passion for and pursued it. I'm glad you mentioned your mom uh, coaching and your dad as well. What was it like growing up with two parents that were coaches? Yeah, it was great. Um, definitely not an ordinary childhood. Uh, at the same time, if I wasn't at the pool, I was at the gym. And so I just grew up playing basketball too. Uh, pretty, I actually, uh, I, I hated going to school when I first started because it was so boring compared to just being at the gym all day, which was my life, you know, prior to that. And so I, uh, yeah, didn't really want to be there for sure. So you were, you would obviously go to the gym with your dad. Um, did you play a little bit of basketball? Did you ever contemplate playing basketball instead of diving? Or was it always, you just fell in love with diving and aquatics? I loved them both. I mean, I loved, I loved all sports really. I grew up playing football too, uh, lacrosse. Um, I played basketball pretty seriously through about eighth grade and, you know, stopped growing at about five, eight. So that was probably my limit there uh, in terms of future uh, success in the sport. So I just, I, uh, I made a decision in about ninth grade to uh, really pursue diving, just go all in and focus hundred percent on that. And Mike, you've not only focused on diving, but academics have been very important for you as well. Currently, you're in graduate school at the University of Michigan. How have you been able to balance diving and academics at the highest level? Um, honestly, it's been great. I had two years where I was just diving, and uh, I, I really enjoyed that, too, to just be 100% in on diving. But it is nice to also pursue something else. And for most people who aren't in, uh, you know, major revenue sports, it's, uh, it's important to start mapping out your next steps. And for me, this was always in the plan. I had actually... I had gotten into Michigan and decided that I was going to go there after I was done diving uh, prior to COVID really happening. So for me, it was more like I just didn't want to get rid of this opportunity. And it went from ending diving and starting uh, school and ended up being uh, a little bit of overlap for one year. But it's, it's been a blast. It's, uh, it's been challenging, but it's been really rewarding as well doing both at the same time. The best of both worlds, right? And uh, accomplishing both at a very high level. Mike, tell us what you would like to do after diving. Uh, so actually, this will be interesting. I, uh, I finished diving on July 28th. I fly home July 29th, and I start my internship on August 2nd. Uh, so a uh, pretty quick switch there. And my internship is sort of a combination of private wealth and venture capital. And so for me, like, like I said, I've been diving this entire time. So this will be like my first real insight into uh, some real professional experience. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And hopefully running with that, but my imagine, I imagine something in either private wealth or asset management. That's amazing. The Olympic games, and then you start a job literally two days later. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, trying to, trying to fit it all in. You are fitting it all in. That's pretty cool. I'm sure people at the office are just so thrilled to have you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see. I think that'll be uh, my work product that determines that, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, they have been incredibly supportive and in just moving the internship dates and allowing me to do that. Um, but also, you know, I think about like pretty much everywhere I've been, people have been so supportive. My classmates at Michigan, the professors, everyone's really just been very understanding of the situation and really done everything they can to help me and support me. And so definitely surrounding yourself with people that, that get it and care about you is, is important. Being flexible for the Olympic Games, that's not something they do often, I'm sure. So <laughs> yeah, it's a unique situation, that's for sure. Mike, I want to talk a little bit about COVID. Obviously, that impacted everyone, you know, across the globe and, you know, shut the world down for a year. Obviously, you kept going, you kept moving. Can you talk about how you were able to just stay sharp during that time? Yeah, I think probably the biggest challenge was sort of keeping up hope. Uh, there was a lot of times you didn't have access to pools. You were kind of, there was any port in the storm, any pool you could find anywhere in the country you were going. I, uh, I at one point taught my girlfriend how to pull me in belts. <laughs> just so wow. diving. Yeah, no. So it really was just like whatever you could do to stay with it. I dove in some pretty crazy pools too. Um, but the biggest challenge about the whole thing was, you know, there were some days with, you know, some media reports and stuff, you'd wake up and you would say, all right, well, 
it just looks like the Olympics doesn't happen. You know, and I'm not one of those situations where if the Olympics didn't happen this year, I, that would have been my last practice, you know? And so you kind of were probably like you were waking up every single day and think, oh, this could be my last day or today might be the day I found out my career's over. And uh, that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, and I can't say enough about Mike Hilde, who's been coaching me this past year and just his ability to sort of right the ship when I felt like that, you know, his ability to just sort of keep me in it and, uh, and wanting to continue to, to do the sport. And so many times you get focused on the end goal or just, oh, you know, all I want to do is go back to the Olympics. All I want to do is make another national team, whatever it is. Um, but really you got to remember like the reason we're doing this is, is because you love it. And, you know, time spent diving is not time wasted, regardless of what happened with the Olympics. So that sort of had to be the way I shifted my mindset through the year. The games being delayed could affect divers and athletes in two different ways, right? They could have been, they could have been ready for 2020, mentally, physically, everything, or they could have used the extra year as a benefit. How did that help you, that having that extra year just help your training, help your mental preparation and everything in between? Uh, you know, I, I, it's really hard to compare the two. Like, I, I don't know that it did help me. I don't know that I'm in a better situation now than I would have been in 2020, but more so just I, I am here, you know, and with that being said, everybody else has had to go through a really tough year too. And for me, it's just like, how have I navigated that to then outperform them at the Olympics? And so it's, it's less of a comparison of, it really becomes less of a comparison of like, how was 2021 me versus 2020 me, but have I navigated this well enough to then perform well at the Olympics relative to other people? And so hopefully I've done a good enough job and uh, we'll find out in about a month. That's right. We'll find out in a month. <laughs> Here we are just, you know, weeks away from the games. How does it feel? I mean, this is your second Olympics. Did you ever imagine you would make two Olympic rosters? No, I mean, I remember when I first made it, it was, you know, beyond my wildest dreams to be on the Olympic team. And uh, to come back to a second one is really special. It is, I'll tell you, like an incredibly different feeling uh, going through the Olympic trials process. And we'll see what it's like in the games. It'll be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I'm incredibly grateful for just the sort of like the good fortune I've had in my diving career and the people who have helped me and allowed me to be at this part because you don't, so you don't make an Olympic team without a lot of help. And you certainly don't make a second Olympic team without even more help. So I'm really grateful to everyone who's, who's played a huge role in it. It takes a village, Mike, right? I mean, your girlfriend pulling on belts, your parents, yeah. your parents support, which if you have videos of that, I, I got to see that. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, the fact that she can pull you on belts, um, your family, your coaches. Can you talk about that support system that you have had? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's been incredible. It's really difficult to describe, um, you know, one of the biggest things is my girlfriend sort of going through it with me. Um, at the time, I was living with my best friend who was an Australian Olympian, James Connor, uh, who made the 2012 games as well as the 2016 games. And then Kennedy, my girlfriend, made the 2016 games. And so it kind of felt like we were all living together and all kind of just going through the whole thing together. Um, and then throughout the rest of the quad too, just being around Kennedy, she's been incredibly just powerful source of motivation for me and inspiring. Um, my parents as well, you know, I, you can't find somebody who believes in you more than your parents, I guess. And that's certainly true for me. My parents have been awesome the whole time. Um, and then just great coaches too. All the coaches that have been around. I can't say enough about Drew at IU. I mean, he coached me for six years and really just set the foundation. Uh, one, obviously getting me to my first games, but then two, just setting the foundation for me to be able to go somewhere else for 10 months and feel confident about where my diving is going to go. You know, and then Mike's done a great job in those 10 months helping me pick up where I needed help. Um, but yeah, there's, there's been, I'm, I'm leaving out a ton of people too, unfortunately, but there have been so many people that have played such a huge role. Oh, I'm sure there's a huge list and it, it goes on and those people know who they are. So even if you left someone off, I'm sure they know um, that you would have mentioned them. There's just too many people. <laughs> um, Mike, we're a few weeks away from the games. You know, where are you mentally and physically right now? as you head into the, uh, the Olympic games? I'm good. You know, it's a uh, pretty big letdown after trials sort of emotionally and physically. And so definitely on the, you know, the rise back from that, i um, starting to get into some really good training stuff. And uh, I think over the next couple of weeks, we're just going to see some really good diving and feel really confident going to Tokyo. And then, you know, you just got to be there on the day. That's what it's all about is being mentally prepared to, to compete. 
And I know diving is an individual sport, but obviously, you know, making the games in synchronized diving, you're working closely with a teammate. You are a team. Talk about the chemistry that you and Andrew, Andrew Capabianco have and what makes you guys a good fit? Um, I think it, it all comes back to work ethic. You know, I think he's a really hard worker. I think he thinks a lot critically about what he's trying to do. I mean, the success he's had in such a short period of time. Uh, we, we always joke, like when him and I first started at Synchro, he had barely been doing inward three and a half and had done zero front four and a half. And we just sort of took it on and believed in each other. And uh, he has done so much work to get to where he is now. And I can't say enough about him and Drew and everybody who's been a part of his process as well to get him to where he is. And I just think we have so much confidence in each other. And uh, you got to have that trust when you're standing up there in the Olympics. And, you know, your goals are on the line. His goals are on the line. You have to believe in each other. That's amazing. I like that you mentioned that. So you almost pushed him to do those dives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Sam Dorman, my partner in Rio, uh, retired in 2018 and sort of had nowhere to go. And uh, I, I don't know if I would say I pushed him to do those dives, but it was almost out of necessity. He knew that that was the list he had to do to be competitive. And uh, he was, yeah, he was going to be physically capable. He did a lot of uh, physical maturing in two years. That was pretty unbelievable too. Uh, probably a testament to his work in the weight room as well. Um, but he just, he knew where he had to be and he made it happen. Mike, having the experience from Rio, from a previous Olympic Games, does Andrew kind of poke your brain about, you know, some advice? What advice do you give him heading into this Olympics? No, he's, he's pretty confident in his abilities. Uh, the one thing that he knows is that the Olympics is just another meet, you know, and it's, it's this huge, crazy thing to everybody else, but to the people competing, it's, it's six dives, just like it is any other meet, and uh, you just got to be ready to go on the day, and so... He's been through, I, I always say World Cup and uh, Olympic trials are more pressure than the Olympics. And he's performed well at both of those. And so I think he's got a lot of, a lot of great experiences to draw on. I think you should feel really confident about how we can do with the Olympics. Mike, it's super awesome. You're, you're set up with a, a job right after the Olympic Games um, with USA Diving and their Champions Forged in Water campaign. How do you hope to always bring diving with you? How do you hope to be a ambassador for the sport? And diving will never leave you, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, obviously care so much about the sport. I care so much about the progression of the sport. And I think one thing that people don't often think about, as we talked about previously, is how you transition out of the sport. And you see a lot of people that maybe dive until they're 28 or something like that, and they leave and they, they don't have a plan. And so, you know, I'd love to be a part of any young diver's life who's looking to sort of pursue that and uh, give any advice that I could have. You know, I certainly don't think I've done it perfectly, but I also know that's a really difficult situation. And uh, any way I can help anyone navigate that, I'd always love to do that. Mike, two Olympic Games, that's amazing. Rio and now Tokyo. If someone's watching this and they want to aspire to have a career like yours in both diving and in life, because you've been successful in both uh, areas, what advice would you give them? Yeah, uh, when I get this question, I always, you know, I wish I had something like really inspiring and, uh, you know, really deep or thoughtful. But the fact is, I just feel like I've worked my butt off. You know, I feel like I've worked really hard my entire life. And going back to my first coach and the person who, you know, taught me how to do everything, my mom. I mean, that was all we talked about for so long was like, that's what you do. You just work hard. And that's what this is all about. And that really dictates how you feel about yourself, you know, um, beyond any result. So that's, that's my advice to, to work hard and to think critically about what your end goals are and how you can get there. So that's about all I got on that one. It's good stuff though. Thank Short you. Thing to the point, you know, okay, Mike, I want our viewers to learn a little bit more about you out of the pool on a day off, which I know you don't get, and you probably won't get until after the games, where can people find you? What do you like to do off the diving boards? Um, so we always joke that like an added course in the NBA curriculum is golf. Uh, so I did start picking up golf a little bit more than I had previously this year. So playing a bit of golf, that's been fun. Uh, just hanging out with friends though is, is probably the best way I would say. I, uh, I've got some great friends at, at Ross right now in Michigan. And so that's been a blast to get to know them over the past year and hang out with them. Uh, but yeah, anywhere I am, I'd say just people around me and being with them. 
It's a good balance. Golf and diving are very similar, right? It's uh, they're both mental games. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that take a lot of practice. Um, yeah. Not quite as good at golf. Bob. It's uh, I'm pretty terrible at golf. If we're being quite frank. So yeah, it's uh, it's a bit different there. It's hard. It's a hard sport. I, I've tried to dip into it a little bit too. And it can be frustrating because unless you practice all the time, it's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta work at it. Um, Mike, what is a, a pre, a pre diving meal? Like you, you wake up, what do you eat? What do you, do you listen to music during diving meets? Do you not listen to music? What, you know, take us through some of your routines before you compete. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a pretty strange diet actually. Uh, like if I have a prelim, I, I won't eat before my prelim. If it's at 10 AM or even noon, um, like my food intake is usually really low, uh, have a couple cups of coffee for sure. Um, but besides that, yeah, my food intake is really low. Um, I eat most of the food I eat at night, like after the event's over. So it's, it's a bit strange there. Um, and then, yeah, during, during competitions, once again, it kind of depends on like the format of the meat, if it's a longer meat, a shorter meat, but I like to get into music, uh, big rap fan, huge J Cole fan, Drake fan. Um, but yeah, I listen to music and then just visualize my dives and make sure I'm physically ready to go. I was just going to ask you what kind of music and, and that's my kind of music too. So look at that. Love it. <laughs> Got to get pumped up for the dives. Yeah, no question. Mike, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck. And I know you're going to do a great job in Tokyo. Take it all in, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is great.